What up, your league fans? Welcome back to a quarter with Kyle Hines. Today and throughout the season, we'll be continuing our journey talking to the future stars of EuroLeague. Today, we have one of the brightest stars, uh, Fenerbahce's own, Tariq Babarik. Tariq, man, how's everything? Everything's fine, Kai. Uh, everything's fine. Season's going uh, well. We just finished practice. Uh, we're healthy and happy and hungry for the season. Good, man. That's good to hear. So now you got to let me set the stage a little bit, okay? It's February 8, 2019. You're playing against Panthenecos. You guys are winning. You're playing well. And all of a sudden, Coach Obradovich turns to you and points to you and tells you to get in the game. What are you feeling at that moment? And for those that don't know, that is your EuroLeague debut. So what are you feeling, you know, at that moment? Were you surprised when he pointed at you? You know, you guys were winning by some points. So did you know that you were going in? How were you feeling? At only 18 years old, which is unbelievable. 18 years old. At that moment, we were leading by 20, I remember. And uh, as soon as the fourth quarter started, you know, you start feeling a little bit uh, nervous because yeah. you know, it's about that time you might get in. You're just yeah. waiting time out, every foul, you're waiting for that substitution for him to pick you up. But you, but when the moment when he said my name to come up, it was, uh, let's say, butterflies. You yeah. know, this cat in your stomach. In, it was like that. Uh, I wasn't expecting to be like that, like to feel that much. But as, as soon as I stepped on that stage and you know, all the lights and everything came to my face and it was one of the moments that I remember to the rest of my life. And you just so happened to score your first EuroLeague basket, you know, during the same game. So what was that feeling like you know, when you scored the basket? Can you describe the moment of like how the basket came? Was it a layup? Was it a jump shot? What was it? I actually remember it. It was uh, I grabbed the rebound, made two dribbles, passed to Eric Green. He was yeah. a former player. He passed back to me, and I did reverse layup on the left side with the right hand. Nice. I, nice. I, and the thing was, you know, for me, it was just a basket because all your mind is on the game. You know that. Yeah. But as soon as you saw fans, you know, appreciating that so much and uh, cherishing you. It was. It felt amazing after that. And every time you rewatch that video, it has similar feeling to, uh, like the first time you felt it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it has a special meaning, you know, I mean, absolutely for you. Um, so after the game was over and you're in the locker room, did the, the, I know you have a bunch of veteran guys on the team, did they do anything? Did they throw water on you? Did they, you know, did they give you, you know, some type of ceremonial thing to, you know, to, to, to mark your first game or something like this? It was, it was, especially that year, it was a lot of veterans, you know, not only, I will not call them teammates, every one of them, Try to be, let's say, a mentor. They made me know it was something big. Yeah. They made me know something. First of all, after the game, you know, all day fighting you to the head, <laughs> sipping on, sipping water on you, you know, talking yeah. to you, game, you know, feeling, you know, cheering you up all the, in the game and after the game. It was amazing feeling for me. Now you talked about a little bit um, about mentors, and you know, I guess in the basketball world we call it bets, you know, so. Who is your vet? I mean, you played with so many, you know, veteran players, and that's one of, I guess, the best parts about playing with Fenerbahce as a young player. You get to play with Jan Vesely and Nando DiColo, and even in the past, Gigi Dottomi and, you know, Nicolo Melli and, you know, Ali Muhammad, all these different players. So who is the player that, you know, that you uh, that you talk to, you know, for the most for advice? For the most about the advice is, you know, I all. I always pick, let's say, I always pick the moment uh, when mm -hmm. we like, go to some of them because every one of them knows something that the other doesn't. Yeah. You know, and in that moment, I wasn't saying like, this is my guy, this is my guy. I was trying to collect the best information from them possible. You know, let's say this year, none the state and uh, let's say in all mental questions that I had preparing for the game, I'll go to him all the time. Yeah, yeah. Jan is, the, Jan is the guy who helps me, you know, during the game, you know, who's always like filling me up, cheering me up, you know, hyping me up defensively and offensively, trying to find me. And, you know, and he is a great friend of the court, too. That two years ago, Gigi. Gigi also gave me great advices, you know, some, some small words that stick to me right now. I can remember them right now. So they were all great mentors, I can say, and great uh, friends of the court, too. Speaking of also great mentors, I mean, at such a young age, you've had 
been coached by some of the most, you know, respected and most legendary coaches, you know, in Europe, you know, whether or not it's, you know, so Jake or Bonovich or the coach you had last year, Igor, or even this year, your coach that you had with, with Sasha. So, you know, to be at such, uh, you know, a young age and to have such experienced coaches, you know, what has that meant for you and your development of your career so far? I can say I'm lucky. I can say I'm lucky uh, because uh, I can, I've seen three of one of the best coaches from the Europe. The first year with Jeko was amazing, amazing. I'm coming from 17 years old, uh, from not knowing anything about basketball. I can say yeah. I didn't know anything. I saw that. Then in that moment, trying to, you know, he telling me like how to put my body, how to read defense, you know, just you're seeing like every single detail is important. And are big informations in your head, you know. Mm -hmm. In that moment, I find myself to love. I can say in that moment I realized I loved it because after the practice, after the game, you watch the film, you watch some games that happened five years ago. You want to learn from them. It's interesting to you, you know. That's what Jerko did to me. With Igor, Igor was a little bit uh, different system. It mm -hmm. was. More MBA system. It was more flow. It was more, let's say, not so much details, but more like flow, more the rhythm, like follow the rhythm of the game. I saw that in him, and with Sasha, Sasha, and I like Sasha too. You know, I'm learning from him. You know, each day, you know, and, and seeing that he has a different approach to the game. Let's say more aggressive, and uh, I like that about. Fenerbahce is known for the atmosphere, the fans. You know, the the arena is you know crazy always. So as an 18-year-old kid, or 17-year-old kid, excuse me, when you walked into the Fenerbahce Arena for the first time and you're being part as a member of the team, you know, what was that atmosphere like for you? It was amazing. It was amazing. It was like from the movies, from the, yeah. all, all, all the lights, all yeah. the lights, all that. They are crazy. They are fanatics. They love that, they love that club so much. Mm -hmm. You feel like that every time on time out, they sing a song or something good. It's it's frightening, let's say, but it's lovely and you love to be a part of it and you're happy to be a part of it. That's all I can say. Now, this is a little bit of a silly question I've asked, you know, some of our guests and we talked about, you know, you being at such a young age and you've already accomplished a lot, you know, as, as, a, as a member of Fenerbahce. But usually people, when you're old like me, you write letters to your younger self. But now we're going to flip it and reverse it. We're going to say, if you were to tell predict what you want your career to be in 10 years if you could tell your older self something what would it be i would say to myself like uh, don't ever get uh, satisfied mm -hmm. don't ever get satisfied uh, be disciplined to yourself and uh, work hard be smart and uh, learn from others now we i talked about it a little bit before but at such a young age at you know under 21 years old you've already been a team that's been to a final four and you know so talk about you know that you know being at such a young age being a part of a final four did that make you a hunger for more make you want you know want to be more want to experience more it is definitely it is that's that's for sure this is the first time in victoria it was 2019 after the great season we had you know and i actually got a chance to play a game in the final four, it made me hungry. It made me, you know, I just wanted to get back there. The next year, I want to get back there to get final four, to play with the team who has ambitions for final four. Definitely, you definitely make me more hungry. I'm sure your family is very important to you. Um, and I'm sure your parents, you know, are, are definitely very important to you. So how, did, how proud are, are they of you? you know, to see what you have accomplished. I mean, because, you know, four years ago, like you, said, you were in the Adidas, you know, next generation tournament. And now, you know, you're playing for, you know, one of one of the biggest clubs in Europe. So, you know, talk about your family and talk about the type of advice that they gave you. Uh, I'll say this. My mother is very proud and very humble, let's say, and yeah. she's very lovely. I can say yeah. that. My father, on the other hand, he's a, he is a little bit more coach head, you know. He is yeah, like, I understand. He's more, he said, okay, in the past, what you're going to think about the past, what is in the yeah, future, yeah, yeah. what is important, don't think about what happened, you did good or bad, you know, it's behind you, focus on what you're going to do tomorrow, you know, so he, when he, he never turns back, like, okay, you were, you came from here to here, he's like, you're here now, do your best to be somewhere higher, not to think about something you did before, he's like that, he has yeah, that yeah. mind. 
been my, my father is the same exact way. I'm I'm 35 years old, and I, I said this before. After every game, my father calls me and tells me everything that I did wrong. So this is something that <laughs> this is something that never changes. So. <laughs> Don't tell me this. You're ruining my hopes. I go. <laughs> no, no, no. Even you're after. Oh, even after we win, even after we win big games or or Euro leagues or Final Four, he still calls me after every game and tells me everything. You should have shot this. You should have did this. You did that. You did that. So this is something that that never. I guess it's just the whole father son thing. I didn't know that. All right, so we're going to go to our quick shot questions, which are just going to be you know some uh, you know some quick answers, quick questions that you can uh, that you can ask. The first one is a retired player that you would love to play against. For you know, Dimitris is the first one, Diamante. and also play with. Okay, this is a quick shot, so I'll say uh, Spanulis. Spanulis was both my answers. When you first signed your contract to Fenerbahce, you knew that Fenerbahce was interested. How did you celebrate? And who was the first person that you told? First person that I told, you know, were my friends. You know, it were my friends. I told them. But they were not so surprised. They they were expecting it, you know. I was more surprised than them. <laughs> That's how uh, it always is. <laughs> you know, and uh, I didn't I didn't so much celebrate it, you know, maybe took my friends, you know, out and everything, you know, in that kind of way, but not so much out of uh, you know, some big celebration that I remember, let's say. What was your favorite or most memorable Euroleague memory or, or something that happened in Euroleague that you, you know, before you came to Euroleague that you watched that's kind of most memorable for you? I didn't watch so much Euroleague back then when I was young. But after that, when I was 17, when I came here, I watched all the games before all the big games that happened before. Mm -hmm. so I remember the game, you know, in 2011, 12, I think. Uh, when you only when only Piakos won 62-61, you know, I remember that was one of the because I rewatched that game. I rewatched yeah. it two times. It's one of the most exciting games that I watched. I can say those. Yeah, and you know something secret? I've I, I've never rewatched that game. I'm no. kind of scared. Yeah, I swear. <laughs> no. I'm, I, I'm I'm still like kind of nervous to rewatch it because it's like almost mm. like it. It had like it, it still replays like the memory is like like here in my mind, and I'm like you know I just want to relive it through the memory. So I've never I've never watched it. Watched I watched it two times. I don't know if you remember last year they put the when it was Corona time. Yeah, put the, yeah. And that in that in that moment I watched that game. I remember one of the most exciting games that happened in the Euro League. I believe definitely, 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 definitely. I was lucky to to be a part of it. Um, last question before we before we hop up out of the quarter. Um, what is your favorite Euroleague arena to play in besides your own? I'll say Panathinaikos Arena is the, for sure, you know, the biggest atmosphere, the biggest atmosphere and brings the biggest excitement before the game and during the game. It's for sure. Definitely. Thank you. Definitely. Definitely. That one Definitely. and the Maccabi also has great energy. Definitely. Definitely. Those are, those are two of my favorite as well. Well, man, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for, you know, hopping in the quarter with me, you know, being part of this conversation, man. I wish you, you know, a lot of luck throughout the rest of the season, a lot of health and a lot of success, not only this season, but, you know, throughout your whole entire career. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for being polite and uh, asking the great questions. It was really nice time doing this interview with you, and I'm very happy I did that. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, EuroLeague fans, for watching. Tune into more episodes of The Quarter with Kyle Hines coming very soon.